Okay guys, uh, we are at the Ovahimba tribe. Uh, we're looking at uh, some houses right now. Here's where they live. Uh, I think this is really beautiful actually. Um, I don't know if I could live here myself, but uh, I think it's very, very cool. The way they've built it is uh, very strong actually. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people which come from not our country, Namibia, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they, they film and they're, they're, they're taking pictures and everything. Is that something which bothers you guys? Like uh, a lot of people from other countries come and just try to, to, to take almost like advantage of like the Ovahimba mm -hmm. story and the... And the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's very dry here, um, not so much water, um, that's probably something that they are in desperate need of. Okay. Okay. Are you also Ovahimba? Yeah. Okay. You you live here? Yeah, I came to Okay. Near the mountain. Oh, it's a beautiful house. Did you make it yourself? Did you build it? You yeah. Yeah. built it. Okay. With water. Do they have water? Oh, oh, there's the water over there. So the government came and they they brought some water here. Just fed them. Yeah, big cats. I think that the future of young men with African background is in Africa. It's not in Europe. I see Europe as a, a place where we can gather knowledge, okay? Gather friends, gather partners, skills. But the emerging market for everybody, even for Europeans that have some sort of business acumen, is in Africa now. But for us come also, just like you said, this ideological responsibility that we have to go back and help all to rebuild, to build, to create, right? And that's every sector, even filmmaking. You know how juicy the, the, the film industry in Nigeria is at the moment? You have millionaires on movies right now in Nigeria, right? Uh, Senegal is pretty, they produce stuff on Netflix right now, okay? So uh, it's a good time for a certain generation of us to go back and rebuild our countries. Do the kids have like any dreams or ideas of things which they want to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think because we have this perception of time like slavery was a long time ago or oh, the, the sharing of Africa from Europe, from the colonies, it was a long time ago, but historically it's been the day before yesterday. But in my job I felt like the token black guy. Like, w let's take some pictures, because we have, yeah, we're not racist, look, we, we hired a black guy. And it felt like I was really, really good at my job, right? But I was the first one to go. Do you think that maybe, maybe we should say just like, okay, they're not gonna give us a seat at the table, so maybe we should just create for ourselves? 
absolutely, absolutely think we should create for ourselves. But I, I think it's important for those who do want to walk the right, walk the path of Education. sitting, yeah, sitting, having a seat at that table, then they should have a seat at that table and it should be made clear that everybody gets an equal seat. Do you guys, uh, how do you guys look at the, that, that whole, the whole situation? Do you guys feel like maybe us, the whole society should come together and start maybe, you know, paying certain things off because uh, a kid in the ghetto here is still suffering off slavery. Because you, if Africa was good, we wouldn't have to migrate into Sweden and all these other places. Mm. Uh, I feel like Sweden brings people in uh, because we want to give people a chance to live here and uh, and uh, so on. And but I feel like we don't really have a responsibility to bring everyone in because that wouldn't be possible. Since Sweden is the size of California and Africa is massive, right? Uh, it, it's a very difficult question. Yeah, and it is. It's because it's such a deep-rooted problem also. It is. And it's very easy also for Swedish people or white people in general to say, well, I'm not responsible for that. I did not do anything. Mm. I was born and it was like this. What does that have to do with me? You know? And uh, it's also hard for, you know, Africans because they want someone to be responsible for this. They want to blame someone for this because but it, it mean, has happened. But through an African perspective, it's not just we want somebody to be responsible, it's the fact that... It, it is. Where we were suffering... Exactly. Like, today exactly. because of it. Exactly. So when people just like... You know, it happened 200 years ago, yeah, but... But we are still living the consequences, yeah. kind still of. still got ghettos and people are traveling Poor, there. And yeah. 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 The question is, like, who who do you hold responsible to great fix that? Like, it's very hard. I have uh, my family that's over there. Kuku. Yeah. 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 Okay, Ngandi. Ngandi. When we were younger, we used to sleep here, all of us. Um, the whole family, actually. Me, my grandma, and yeah. my cousins. It's more like a... Oh, yeah. Uh, she's saying that I used to sleep here um, and cry a lot when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And to see, can you explain a little bit what what we're doing here, what we're cooking? Oh, hmm? ah no, we are just here cooking mahangu porridge. Okay, mm -hmm. mahangu porridge. Um, traditional porridge, mm. mahangu. I don't want us to become dependent on other people for our well-being. But I would like to see is those young men come together and start talking to each other and building networks to make their things work, right? That's much more interesting to me because there's also a lot of divide among us. And that's a problem because I grew up with Pan-Africanist ideal, for instance. I don't know how it is for the kids who were born here or really grew up here from, from a young age. But I knew the remnants of that ideology because my father and his, you know, at especially the generation of my father, which has the, pe the people that are in the 70s years old now, grew up with a certain idea was the post-colonialist ideal in which all the cultures and countries in Africa come together to build something magnificent, right? And that was called the Pan-Africanism. So many great leaders were born out of that, right? And I think that this for the disenfranchised Africans that live in Europe, they don't have that anymore. They need to rekindle with this. Very important. Let us start with your own network, yeah? That the closest young African guys that you know, you might be able to build this mentality. Because you have a lot of capacity, but what you need is, you know, to network into each other. That you might make your things work better. How are you doing, cousin? Okay. Yes. What's up? Good to see you. Good. Yeah. 
Bro. Hello. Say hi. Is the family home or? I wonder what kind of dog you going to see here. <laughs> My goodness me. Who is this? This handsome man over here is Hello, young my baby. baby. Uh, so nice to meet you. I miss you. Mama gave me these uh, documents for you. I love this country, like my own, right? I love those foolish people like my own as well. This is people that I will defend with my last breath. If something happened to this country, I will be here to defend it. Truly, you know, because I, uh, the way I was welcomed in society is rare from other places that I've been at, even within Africa for other Africans. I've seen Africans discriminate Africans to the death, you know, but it never happened to me here, even though there is friction. Okay, but it was not a generalizing. In a generalized fashion, I have a good life here. I'm sitting here in front of an expensive camera. There's another black dude behind that expensive camera with a white dude over there that is producing it. Come on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not gonna say I have a bad life here, right? So I think it's still, it's a fantastic country with a, such a beautiful culture and amazing opportunities. And I'm very happy to live here. I'm happy that my kid is born here. But one more last thing, I don't need to be here to be happy, you know? And I think for everyone with another background, especially African background, you need to have this realization that you don't need to be here to be happy. So if you don't feel happy here, go somewhere and find your happiness. Okay, hello. How's it going? Oh, nice to meet you, man. Likewise, my name is Ortega. Ortega, okay. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, nice Thank to you. meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. fine. Uh, we just arrived, so. Yeah, you guys can come. Oh, thanks, thanks. 